All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. The Dr. Luffy is sitting and eating his food over there. He'll join us in a few minutes and we'll talk. Um, okay, so Christy, <laughs> Christy saying, Christy, you're making me so uh, hungry. I forgot, I put a pecan <laughs> half on top of those it was pretzels, candies, sometimes before going in the oven. Good. I'll have to come over to eat these. Skyfrog is here. Hey, Skyfrog, how are you? D Doug is here. Hello. Uh, du Bachi is here. Hi, you all from Honeybean. Hello. Honey Honeybean. Nani is here. Uh, hello. D Diaz is here. T Hunter is here. Jabra Bean is here. Um, Thank you for helping to inform my health care decisions for me and my family. Bless you. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Christy is here. T. Hunter, Algebra. So many folks are here. Moorhouse. What does Hello Bean fans? Rene is here. Moorhouse says, so now some are suggesting that youth get just one shot of the Amarani thoughts. The NYT article goes on to say that all cases may occur in the young resolve. Um, of course, we know that not all cases resolve. There are people who have died, and we know that. The one shot is an interesting thing, at least for the youth. So remember, UK has been brave enough to do this bigger distance, and they are still seeing good efficacy. And interestingly, they see efficacy increasing as the time passes, even after one shot. And that's what you saw with these uh, points as well. Let me see if I can share my screen. I have to share my screen with this, <laughs> with the fun OBS. So if I go here, you may have seen that in these studies for SARS-CoV-1 or 2, um, where is it? So look at this. This is... Pfizer effectiveness was negligible in the first two weeks. It increased to 36.8% in the third week after the first dose and reached its peak at 775 in the first month after the second dose. So this is after the second dose because the schedule has been three, four weeks for the first dose. But if you look at UK studies, they show efficacy continues to increase. Although then at day 84, there is a second dose, which brings it from 80s into 90s. So it is an interesting point because youth are generally less um, at risk anyways. So maybe giving them one shot is sufficient to improve their, to kind of train their immune system to say, hey, if this happens, just respond. I like that idea. And he says, love the intro illustration. I want to show it again. Do you? Uh, oh, I closed it. Where is it? So this is me being lazy to draw. <laughs> so I thought I'll just draw this. I drew two things and it was so funny that this was, I swear I am not able to see your reference. <laughs> and Dr. Bean is showing references from an immunology book. See, it says antibodies wane as a normal immune process. And then this was the funniest for me that Luffy, Kairi, my sons, me, and my wife comes in and she says, my hairstyle is not right. I wanna... And so, so she corrected that. That was funny. Okay, so how are things? Ellie says, what are the risks of the mRNA reverse transcripting into the recipient DNA using your own body's ability to re reverse transcribe? So the, our body system, let me explain a problem if our mRNAs were just that um, fallible. I'm gonna share my screen one second. So <laughs> my picture is now under the 
uh, other one but let's say so the question is can so here let's say there is a cell there is a cell here and in the cell we have reverse transcript is as well but usually it is brought in we usually don't have them lying around to say go do this thing other viruses can bring them in but imagine that if we have a reverse transcriptase and every time we release in messenger RNA, this guy is going to reverse it and then bring it in and integrate it into DNA. Then we make some more mRNA and this guy attacks that and reverses it and sends it back in. Our DNA would just explode in a few days by addition of the DNA to it. That doesn't happen. So very little chance. In the labs, we can reproduce these kind of things by providing specific special environments. There are viruses that can do that as well. But generally, and the point of these medicines, for example, let's say vaccines, other medicines, point of testing their efficacy and their side effects is these kind of things to see how, what is happening? What are the risks? And of course, you can see billions of dollar, uh, doses are given. So not too worried about that. <laughs> Texas says, I love Dr. Bean's long breath before starting this description. He is so patient to correct the horrible disinformation out there, no matter how many times. Love him. Thank you very much. This is what bothers me sometimes that people just, and by people, the, the leaders keep misguiding us. And this is why I put the references in front of it, us. So that if, let's say, you say that, you know what, Mubin may be wrong. Fine. I'm a human being, so I can be wrong as well. But at least if you have references, you can go and see what these references are saying and then form an opinion that may be different from mine. Or come back and say, well, the reference is not the way it may be and Mubin is wrong. I usually, uh, so I know that there, there have been folks who become upset and then they go and complain and I understand it. There is a power of complaint in people's hands. But please realize those folks who start attacking others on the channel, and start becoming disrespectful to others are usually the ones I don't want to have them around. There are many people even now that call me names and curse at me or things that I think mostly I can live with that. But when they start going around and attacking others and, and calling them names and picking fights, that is where um, it becomes difficult because the civility goes away. If somebody does not want to be civil with me, that's fine because they're responding to something I said and they're not happy and fine. But just asking someone else who's putting a night, you know, a comment, liking it or disliking it and just going and attacking them, that's not good. <laughs> Kira says, Kira Shrem. To Supreme Sabbath Bean, if we agree on that, on the massive amount of underreported injury due to the AAV and mRNA vaccines, where where's underreporting? Should there to really be expectation of less injury with Novavax? So that's a very interesting question. There are two parts of the answer. One is that we have to see their trial results and see what kind of injuries did they create because. Do they have some adjuvant or do they have spikes sitting outside? What does it do? And so on. And the other part is that definitely if we say, well, there is no messenger RNA in it or there is no DNA in it or there is no adenovirus in it, that all reduces some of the anxiety. And I actually do not like adenovirus-based platform. And you know my um, wife sometimes. Today, so her complaints have become more infrequent a couple of weeks later today she once again said i have pain in all my joints she never had these complaints before um, the vaccine they have thankfully become really rare but it still keeps occurring so i'm not a fan of adenovirus based vaccines for women under 50 they, they are fine for men 
but Novavax kind of clears us from those. Now, what are Novavax's own problems? I haven't seen them yet. So we will have to wait for that, but they do clear some of the issues. Roller Girl is here. Hello, Roller Girl. How are you? Uh, on Andy is here. Pasi is here. Pasi, how are you? <laughs> Potato Zebra says, Dr. Bean is a good guy. Thank you very much. Uh, Jack says, there we go with the name calling. Has it started? So Alquin says, what is your favorite food? Alquin's is a nice chunk of king salmon, sauteed in butter with a side of broccoli. So I'll give you a uh, couple of answers here. This is a fun question. So I love uh, biryani. I love nihari stew, beef stew. And I love chicken kadai. I love chicken kebab. But not from the ones that we find here in the US. They are... They look like the food, but they have no taste like the original one. And the fun thing about salmon. So when I came to U.S., I would not eat meat, which is not cut in a, in a specific, like kosher. So my only choice would be when I go out with team members or friends is to eat fish or vegetarian. So I used to eat salmon. So for 21 years, I have eaten so much salmon <laughs> and so many flavors of it that now I have become, you know, kind of eh to salmon, but salmon is good. Rima is here. Rima, how are you? I saw your question of the last one. Uh, uh, haven't gone to the to the pharmacy. I know you're gonna yell at me, but that's the truth. <laughs> Red Red Dog D Darcy says biryani is a bomb. I tasted authentic dish made by someone from Iraq. So good. Yes. So for last couple of days, I have had the um, because of this. Uh, you know, the neck pain and the, the arm pain. I was not drawing a lot, as you can tell from my presentations. So I would get another hour or so free in the day because when I'm doing presentations, I'll start drawing earlier. So I have been cooking. So I cooked chicken palau one day. Um, I cooked a couple of other things too. So nowadays I've been cooking. And when I was in on the East Coast, so Art Patron is saying, does mean you would like short lunch of freshly caught trout cooked at campsite? I would love it. I have never gone camping in the, in the U.S. But on, when I was on the East Coast, there was a lot of uh, chowder. I love chowder. Creed says salmon's got good omega. Yes, salmon is good. Uh, sushi is good. I have developed taste for sushi. I love uh, boiled fish from Chinese uh, menu. I love boiled fish. Chrissy says you would love camping in the mountains. You must do it. Yes. Uh, so my wife and I were planning to go and then the pandemic and then here we are. So pandemic is almost over. Uh, so we will go. <laughs> there is a, I was taking an account, you know, when you go to a war, then at the end of it, you take an account of what happened. So I was taking an account that, um, in these 18, 19 months, this part of my hand, it has reduced in its uh, numbness, but this part has become permanently now uh, 
you know, numb. I started developing another issue. And in addition to that, uh, there has been, you saw that complaints and audits. So there is another audit continuing at this time. A bigger complaint is resolved. So that is good. There is an audit still going on, which I think this is the second audit. And again, we didn't do anything incorrect. It's just people complaining. And when you complain somewhere, then they would do an audit. And um, this time it might actually hurt the business. So there is a <laughs> there is a lot. When I started, I didn't think that this all would happen. I didn't think I'll present so many topics. I didn't think people would become so much upset as well. But here we are. No, uh, Drew says IRS. No, not IRS. And we are all good there. Um, this is mostly the topics that I teach and what I teach and why do I teach them. Most of the time, things like hydroxys and ivermectin and vaccine clotting and those things are what people become upset about. And then they say, why did we talk about this? And so they trigger a complaint. So Rudy says, do you think that a booster would improve affinity maturation of antibodies? In theory, yes. Mechanism, from a mechanism point of view, yes. It would wake up the immune system again. The immune system is going to go and work with the antigen again, and the memory cells would do affinity maturation as well. So yes. Uh, Pasi saying closet picker, good question. What is the question? Let's see. Doug is saying closet picker is a question. Okay. So closet picker says, is waning immunity why we need a booster for tetanus? Yes. Yes. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> Bree says, post white wine and lemon fish. So I don't take wine, but fish is fine. Barbara says, I just got a grid for my wood fireplace outside so I can go Awesome. You should invite us. We should have a cool beans party. <laughs> Doug says, let's talk about the food. Yes, absolutely. Tell me what other things about food. I love, um, what is that? Mango lassi. Go fake yourself, Megan says, if the vaccines can damage the heart, can it damage the thymus when small children are jabbed? I've read it's the thymus protecting children from COVID. I have an eight-year-old. So cool beans are aware of this. I'm, I'm very, very careful about talking about the kids um, because one, I'm not a pediatrician. Secondly, I'm not qualified to speak in that area. Thirdly, I'm just too scared to talk about children and uh, even in terms of mechanisms. The thymus is actually a very important gland in children that helps with the T cell um, training. And it's a fascinating thing. I actually have a lecture about that T cell training in immunology. So it is over here somewhere and the immune cells, they come out of the bone marrow, they go to thymus, they get trained over there. If they misbehave, they're killed there. So vaccine should not do anything to thymus. Thymus is just a place to be training T cells. So no issues there. But again, for your child, please talk with your doctor and discuss it. From a mechanism point of view, no issues. So John B says higher CD8 T lymphocyte equals T cell immunity. So good question. T cell immunity is in two ways. So if I share my screen, look, T cell, if we look at that immune system picture, right? So here is the innate arm. Innate arm has um, macrophages, dendritic cells, monocytes, neutrophils, NK cells, right? neutrophils, NK cells, and so on, the ones with the eye patch. Then the, now the T cell, the, choir, the adaptive arm has helper cells, which are T cells. 
Now the helper cell, so naive T cell, which becomes T helper one or T helper two, which then if T helper one, then that gives rise to, or not rise to, it helps be, have a B cell become an active B cell or plasma cell. And T helper two causes an active, makes a cytotoxic T cell, CD8 positive T cell or CTL cell active, correct? So many times people think that when we are talking about the T cell related immunity, we are only talking about cytotoxic, but that is not the case. These are all T cells as well, and they are responsible for both sides. So somebody responded with humeral arm or with the cytotoxic arm, there is going to be helper T cells involved anyways, and their memory will be formed. Plus, when usually when we say cytotoxic side, then we usually are talking about this side. So now if I go back to your question, um, where, where is the question? <laughs> question moved away, I'm sorry. Rima says, my uh, prediction is we'll be soon past Delta. And here is an interesting thing. Delta is not letting any, any other variant uh, bounce up. So I think Delta would be the end of the pandemic as well. <laughs> Nipa says, nothing to beat the mutton biryani from Kolkata with egg and the yummy aloo. Wow. Okay, so now you're making me hungry. <laughs> Sky Frog says, sushi is a bait. So I used to not eat sushi and then my family loves eating sushi. So I developed the taste for sushi. So here is a question. John B said, higher CD8 T lymphocyte T cell immunity. So yes, in day-to-day uh, -day discussions, T cell immunity can mean just the CD8 and higher CD8 is higher T cell immunity. But in a more technical way, T cell immunity includes T helper which means humoral or cytotoxic. So the correct term will be higher T cell count will mean more cytotoxic T cell response. So I see uh, a few uh, super chats. Thank you very much. And here are some questions too. One of your millionaire guests was sponsoring an ivermectin trial in Nepal. Any news? Uh, I do not know. This is a, I think you may have been talking about Steve. We'll have to ask him. <laughs> so Jamie says, have I made a video about developments in Sweden? Not yet. So I have so many topics to talk about. I was actually thinking one day to just start in the morning and keep staying live and those you know these topics that are sitting at the docket for a long time just one by one talk about them nairi is here i love this show you bring me so much comfort and knowledge you're very welcome nuna says who will cook um usually my wife cooks if you're talking about my side, but I, <laughs> Texas is all about food, but I cook as well. Barbara says, you're all invited. All right, guys, we're all going to Barbara and Lotus. We're going to have fun. I'm still trying to see there is a here. So Safia Shabazz says, apparently I'm being investigated by the board for prescribing ivermectin, still no deaths after 18 months. So this is happening to a lot and people are complaining and they're getting people in trouble. Uh, have you gotten in touch with Dr. Corey and others so they have some advice plus um, see if Dr. Heather and others too. And sorry about that. Uh, Drew Man says, oh, I'm sorry to hear you are an excellent doctor educator. Thank you very much. I have gone through these investigations and those nowadays because people have been complaining. Weird that this happens. 
I think it's just easy to go and complain and then let the person figure it out. <laughs> Jacob has a good question. When did you know you wanted to become a doctor? So that is such a fun question. So in our society, parents usually just say, my child is going to be an engineer or a doctor from a very young age. So you don't even find an opinion. You don't even make an opinion. You just say, okay, I'll be a doctor or an engineer. That's what gets ingrained. And when I was 13 years old, my, um, my mother's sister, my auntie used to live in um, Birmingham, UK, and she had three boys. And they came to visit us in Lahore, Pakistan. And as part of that, they said, the boys said, hey, we, we work on computers and we play. On... So I became very interested in computers and we didn't have computers. And they told me how a computer looks. And I asked my, my adopted parents. So parents had separated. So my uncle was raising me. I asked him to buy me a computer. He said, no. So I said, all right, I'll build a computer. So I started building things with the woods, wood and here is light on it. And it was just, but at that time I was quite passionate about it. So the whole day I'll sit and put LEDs in wooden blocks and want to plan the wooden blocks to move in the, like A and B. And so my uncle finally said, fine, I'll get you a computer. So I got a computer at 13 years of age and that became such a big deal for me. I would spend my whole day on computer and I started writing assembly language because there was no basic language at that time or other languages. And so I wanted to be a software engineer or programmer. So when I uh, went to 10th grade, I topped my board, uh, Lahore board, one, uh, one part of the Lahore board. So that gave me good enough numbers to go to government college, which is also one of the top colleges. Uh, so going there was a big honor. So I went there. And for somebody of my background, where parents had separated, uh, not very well um, schooled and so on. So getting into government college was a big deal. Then in the government college, I studied, studied, and studied. And I ended up, I believe from my session from government college, there were only a couple of people, or three people, who ended up in King Edward. Nobody else from our session. So that was a big honor as well. King Edward used to take only top 250, 256 people from the whole country. So I went to there. Now, when I was in government college, I told my older brother that I'm not going to go to medicine. And he said, why? He himself was in King Edward and he was four years ahead of me. So he said, why? And I said, I want to do computers. And he said, there is no computer college here. You are just going to be not fully educated. And why don't you get into medicine? And then you can do computers afterwards. So I went to King Edward. Then afterwards, I went to colleges for uh, computer sciences. So since then, I then never tried to switch to one side or the other. I just kept them both going. Medicine, teaching, and computers, practicing. That is how I did this. So what did I want to become? If you ask me today, so I've been changing. If you ask me today, what would I love to be? Um, practicing doctor, I would love it. Uh, practicing engineer, I would love it. Uh, artist, I would love it. You make me a chef, I would love to cook food. So I have music. I love music. Um, I learned to play sitar for two, three years. So I love that too. So I love everything. <laughs> Whatever you put in front of me, I love to do it. <laughs> Brisa, you wanted to become a ballet dancer, don't lie. That would be nice too. <laughs> Go fake yourself, Megan says. 
you are a talented illustrator better than me and that's my job wow that's a big praise of course you are better than me but i'll take it just to be encouraged with it so pasi is saying texas mike the problem in netherlands is vaccine pass qr code if you have that you can go in bar if not you need to test negative quick test recovered get pass for 6 months like vaccinated <laughs> yes yes so m gregory you are correct if you go to my early part of my life when i was not even as in a school at that time we used to fix washing machines and uh, sell candies and those kind of things at that time this was a great idea for me to become a motorbike or a car mechanic and that would be high life for me that used to be my plan i used to think so much that if i have a motorbike and if i can become a car mechanic what a great thing that would be <laughs> Barbara says Alberti can program in at least fifty languages. So for languages, I have become so agnostic to language. You can tell me which language to program in, and I would um, learn the basics and work on it. My son, both are engineers, software engineers. So younger one is now doing it, and he had his friends uh, on a, a Zoom call with me, and they were talking about engineering. and i said you can pick up any language and learn some basic fu- fundamentals and you can be fine with it and they said what and i said look you should know how to manipulate numbers how to manipulate strings how to manipulate dates um then how to read write files how to do io with the uh, screen how to do io with keyboard mouse mic or not mic or speaker or not are not big deals then how to know if you wanted to go a little above that how to how do you do multi threading if you have some languages which are more domain design oriented then to understand how do they work there locking mechanisms uh, semaphores uh, these kind of things if you can understand those what are kernel level locks what are user level locks what is the security aspects of the kernel what are the kernel calls that need to be secured and so on So, sir, if you just know these basic foundations for and understand how various languages handle them, you can work in any language. So, because of that, I have never been afraid of picking up any language to work with. The languages that I've worked with, I started with assembly for Z80, then I did assembly for 6502, then I did assembly for uh, um, 8088. then for 886 then for 286 pentiums and onwards meanwhile we started getting basic and then fortran and pascal i never actually worked on pascal basic and fortran i worked on then came c and i loved c so then came c++ the books are here i loved c++ as well with that came the object oriented designs and programming and i loved that uh, with that i worked on uh, Do you remember there used to be a DBase database program, DBase, and then um, there was Visual Basic language that came in. I worked on that, and then um, I started working on some of the Oracle databases and their how to write their procedures and their syntaxes for queries. Then um, lately, I have been working with um, Swift language. Uh, Lizzy, I love C plus plus. I teach C plus plus as well. I love it. <laughs> Tune says, "See, you are a super nerd." I love C plus uh, plus. I have not worked on COBOL or Pascal. <laughs> Sky Frog says C plus plus thousand milligram. <laughs> yes. So if you see here, 
C, C++, ASP.NET. I remember working on ASP.NET when it came in, but I never became a fan of ASP. I started working with PHP, then I started working with Ruby, Ruby and Rails platform. Um, so there are PHP books over there, C++, ASP, C. Then next to that is the, um, so actually it is so fun. I'm gonna show you something. A few days ago, my son returned this to me. I love robotics and the programming for robotics. So this was uh, basic stamps and others, which first I worked on it, then I gave it to my son to say, you should work on this. And he never even opened this box. He just gave it back to me and say, hey, dad, remember you gave this to me? <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, I love to work with, with OpenGL. I love graphic programming. So if you see here, there's going to be there's going to be books for, um, you know, metal for Apple's graphic programming engines. So I was learning Swift and metal programming in a few months ago. Java, yes. So, so. <laughs> Java is a language that I can work with. Um, my engineering career, most of my team members on the back ends have been working with Java. But Java is something that I could never actually just work more easily on it. I always preferred languages C, C++ type. Although I work very well with JavaScript. So Carlo says, if hypothetically healthy person fast for two days, would there be any harm? So depends what does fasting's definition is. If the fasting's definition is that they're taking water and not taking food, then it is important that they understand the energy needs. Um, they can become in serious trouble. Actually, my older son tried that. And then the second day he was all dizzy and not able to... Uh, take care of himself and he called me and I said please eat something right away he didn't tell me he's doing it so remember this that fasting's definition is important do we not eat anything and then just taking flu or liquids if you're taking liquids what is the composition of the liquid is that water or is that actually mineral waters or is that nutritional waters or is that some fruit juices so it really depends uh, what is the definition of fasting Lizzie says, my C++ teacher was not all that great. Teaching is a gift. You're correct. I, I have learned that if a teacher says, I don't like this, then most of the time their students would say, I don't like this as well. So I have never said, I don't like this topic or that thing. And because of that, my students and I have always just worked with whatever. So uh, Nipa, good question. Should we cool beans go to Odyssey after every lecture and click up so that gradually we can shift there in the case YouTube closes, go for Odyssey? Yes, and uh, on this Monday, so this reminds me, on this Monday, Odyssey team member will be with us on live. So Monday's 6 p.m. is about Odyssey. So he would join us. There was a, uh, there's a doctor, Dr. Sumit, uh, Kesare, he had said that, hey, I want to understand how to work with Odyssey. Then there are some more cool beans who talked about it. So Tom will join us on Monday and we'll talk about how to use Odyssey. And uh, he said, I can help cool beans if they need to. I was asking him about moderation and so on. So good news is that they have moderation as well. So he'll teach us how to use Odyssey. So Alquin says, no C++, but mostly uses VBA since I'm not here. So VBA is good as well. So uh, Visual Basic uh, codes. Do you know the very first time I worked with Visual Basic, I had no clue what visual languages are. So imagine 
pulling a text box on the visual canvas and then not knowing the purpose of that text box because the idea of visual forms was not there yet. So I still remember the very first time I worked with Visual Basic, I had the form, I pulled a text box on it, I increased the size of it, and I wrote a complete program in it. I thought that that text box was to write code in it. So I wrote two paragraphs of code and then I wanted to run it. And <laughs> that was a text box. So that was funny. Somebody taught me then how to work with it. Denise says, my husband programs in C++, lol. I love C++. C++ is such a beautiful language. So a few days ago, I was talking with my son's friends, and they were talking about what language they are working with. And I said that the best way to learn a language is to understand why it was made. So why did we get C? Why do we call C as an intermediate language? And we have assembly as a low language and then basic like languages as high level. What does it mean? And then what is the philosophy of that language? And that gives you a better idea of how to work with it. I love the C++'s philosophy. John says, uh, I have recently started watching your videos and they are fantastic. Do you find that there's a correlation with programmers and mathematicians also being good in creative fields? I think so. So I have never been afraid of doing art. I actually loved doing art. So I think creativity is actually everywhere and in everyone. Um, Sinch says, is your problem related to YouTube? So uh, I am attacked from all kinds of aspects. YouTube, um, career, business, friendships. People are just going around wherever they can and causing issues. So uh, Adi says, your comment, Murha's joking, your comment made me laugh. Thank you. So I, I want to see that comment too. <laughs> so Kyron, I have not used MATLAB. I always wanted to, but I have not really used it. Maybe one day or two days I started it, did some graphs and then just did not work more on it. Texas says, uh, question, would you vaccine comparison lectures be good for cool beans to think through individual choices? Yes, actually, Rima has been asking me to put this together and I got um, pulled into these uh, distractions that I just mentioned. And so that whole thing fell to the wayside. Um, Rima is here. I think we should get back to it. So yes, you're correct. So Drew says, will you do a live Q&A? So yes, this Monday, 6 p.m. lecture would actually be Tom from Odyssey who would teach us how to work with Odyssey. Ala Senior says, you are amongst the four most doctors in the world right now. Keep it up. Thank you very much. <laughs> TD says, I reluctantly signed with Odyssey. TD, you don't like Odyssey? I'm, I'm not being facetious. I'm just asking. Uh, 
So Molly says, I hope you put all your COVID artwork into a post-pandemic book. Molly, I think about this every day, that if I get a little more time, then I could start doing... Remember, this is Inktober, Inktober going on right now, so I really want to draw some inked characters and start writing the book. I just don't have enough support at this time to hire people to do it. And I don't have enough time. But you, all these illustrations are saved. I think more than 30,000 illustrations. <laughs> Doug Poss, I saw that. His tweet about the equine encephalitis with horses and molnupiravir being a medicine for horses there. It is actually so sad. I was thinking about this today that to taint ivermectin by calling it horse medicine, Ivermectin got, a, or the creation of Ivermectin, they got the Nobel Prize because Ivermectin removed or took care of the river blindness in humans. In uh, impoverished countries, took care of the worm situation, helps with scabies. It is such a useful drug for humans, such a impact, positively impactful drug, and to call it, to insult the drug to call it horse dewormer. All of these journalists that do it, have they never seen that this thing, this drug has was given a Nobel Prize for this molecule, for the creators, and the impact in the world of this drug? This is how people can become blinded with their like, dislike, or biases. This is a good question, Pasi. How long after recovery can a T-cell test detect us? Can it detect us recovered in March 2020? So it was thought that it can detect T-cells even after a year. But I have heard from some folks, they say we tried it after a year. It did not help. It did not detect anything. So it looks like it may not have the same um, detection capability in all people. And it could be that people don't have the cells and it is not detecting them. Reema is saying, yeah, let's please do it. Yes, Reema, I know. So sorry that I am behind in these things. So there is a question from Tube, Tube Sterini. Should people with type O blood think twice about taking aspirin or anticoagulants in conjunction with COVID prophylactically or otherwise? So important thing is this, type O can have bleeding tendency. But if that is the case, they should have, if they already have a severe case and they should already know that I have bleeding tendencies. If not, it may be useful to talk with the doctor to see blood, uh, you know, the factor eight levels before just randomly taking blood thinners. <laughs> so <laughs> Finn Bean is saying, you nerds have thrown me into another planet. I speak seven languages. Wow. But now I need a translator to tell me what you're talking about. Wow, seven languages? So I speak Urdu and Urdu is kind of a mixture with Hindi as well. So I can speak and understand Hindi too. Uh, Urdu and Hindi are kind of the same, Punjabi and English. There was a time I used to speak French, but now I'm totally lost with French. You're very welcome. John says, can we support you in Odyssey with something equivalent to a super chat? I think that on Odyssey, there is a um, library Bitcoin type thing and one can buy that and then tip with that and that is the way to support. 
So I think there is a way. <laughs> so Jim says, sorry to ask again, is there an update to Novavax and is it safer? So we did have an update, which I thought was very exciting. And that is that participants of the Novavax trial have been recognized, those who got the vaccine have been recognized as fully protected. That is a positive news. That means now Novavax can take that message and then go back to FDA and say, let's approve it as well. So it is possible that they'll get approved. When that is a question, but at least it seems like they are making progress. <laughs> Brian says, I speak fluent gibberish. It helps me with medical terms. Dysdidocokinesia. I loved dysdidocokinesia as the uh, medical term when I was studying second year medicine. <laughs> Ralph says, do you miss Nihari and Chapli Kebab? Absolutely. Um, and I take Nihari sometimes over here, but it is just not there. It's not good. Ralph says, I also speak Punjabi, Dr. Bean. Both changa. Manu Punjabi both pasand hai. <laughs> Skyfrog says I speak English and bad English. I speak accented English. Uh, Ralph says, can I take ivermectin on day of vaccine to counter spike proteins? You can, but I don't think there is an issue with this spike, but one can, again, can't give you an advice, uh, but spikes can help with there is an in silico study that shows that spike protein and ivermectin interact. Okay, so almost there. How about Luffy is being suspiciously quiet? Yes, where is Luffy? That is actually a good question because just before the talk, he woke up. I said, Oh man, now he's going to spend his time interjecting and offering his advice. And when I started, he was eating food and now he's just gone somewhere. Okay, let's not call his name because then he's going to come here. Charles says, always grateful, medical guru. Thank you very much. Uh, Closet Picker says, I speak French and English, either one without noticeable accent. Very good, I love it. Denise says, my husband also speaks Hindi, Urdu, English, and a little Swahili. Very nice. So the local language, so instead of Swahili, I speak uh, Punjabi. And I love Punjabi. <laughs> yes. Dr. Luffy, Dr. Luffy is, has left me alone today to teach on my own without his help. What's going on, Dr. Bean, spreading misinformation? That's crazy, Moorhouse. Dr. Moorhouse, did you say I'm spreading misinformation? Dr. Bean cracks me up, thank you. <laughs> Ten Bohemian says, my first language is Greek. Very helpful in medical school. Absolutely. I always used to have a problem with how do I um, understand the Greek terms. 
Chule Fogger says, Punjabi yummy food. I love Punjabi and food is very good too. Punjabi songs are very good too. <laughs> Go Fake Yourself says, I'm a fan of the word Kwashiko, not the condition though. Agreed. Same thing. Um, I love Dysdidocokinesia, but not the condition I would not want anyone to have it. Dysdidocokinesia is a uh, cerebellar lesion. Uh, normally, if, uh, let's say my hand is here and you ask me to touch my nose, I will know how to just bring it from here to here. Even if I close my eyes, I can know how to bring it here. And that is because the sensory input for our body state is sent to brain through the muscles, joints, Golgi tendon uh, operators, then visually we can see and know where the hands are and so on. Then ears have the balancing system in them. All of that information is then uh, integrated with, with uh, basal ganglia and cerebellum for movement. And so if my eyes are closed and my hand is here and I want to touch my tip of my nose, my brain knows how to calculate, the, do the math to bring it from here to here. In dysdiadocokinesia, when you tell the patient to touch their nose, they cannot. Their um, motor pattern calculations are broken. So what they do is they bring their hand to a, not, a known position, a home position, if you will. And then from there, then they move in a way to bring it here. So they would probably bring it down to the normal resting state and know, okay, now it is here. And from there, they would slowly bring it here. So that is this, it's a decomposition of the movement called the dystidocokinesia. Lee says, is it okay to skip the second Pfizer shot due to headache lasting three days and concern about my first switch to Novavax? Rolls out in Australia. So it's a difficult question to answer. Even when you ask your doctor, he would also uh, become thoughtful. The, the reason I'll tell you, the thoughtfulness would be not taking the second dose can create a risk if the vaccine efficacy is not sufficient and you get exposed. At the same time, the pros and cons that if you if you had the vaccine and that caused headache. Now, remember, one of the side effects is headache. The question is, was that clotting or not? Normally, clotting would persist for a long time. Plus, there will be more aspects as well. But I can't say without having the labs, without understanding it. So if we presume it was clotting, then the second dose can be a problem. And so uh, your doctor should help. And in the same time, maybe Novavax. So the question is, what are Novavax's own side effects? We don't know yet. Who knows? Maybe they come out and they say, well, one of the side effects is clotting. Then what would we do? So that one part is still not known. I love Novavax, but they're just so behind. Correct. So there is a sky frog. There is a book called The Man Who Thought His Wife Was a Hat. So when the right and left brain cannot communicate, then the these things become messed up. <laughs> Douglas says, just diet, coke, anesia. Uh, I'll write it down. <laughs> Doug is funny. Okay, so it is this diadocokinesia. This, I think it is DYS. This diadocokinesia. So let me Google it as well. This diad 
diatocokinesia. So DYS, I was correct. So this diatocokinesia CHO instead of KO. I wrote KO. So this is CHO kinesia. Is the medical term for an impaired ability to perform rapid alternating movements. So if you ask the patient to do this, they cannot. So there's a decomposition at the moment. Complete inability is called adidocokinesia. The term is from Greek. Uh, I do not know how to read it. Bad succeeding movement. So if you ask them to repeat this way, they can actually. So is a decomposition of movements. Brandon says, cool means turning on each other. Luffy will not like this. Guys, don't turn on each other. <laughs> Some of the cool beans turn on me. That is fine. But don't turn on each other. Don't. Don't. One, Abir. Rican says, is there any evidence of complete immunity to SARS-CoV-2? I think the question of the definition for uh, complete immunity means what? Um, but if you mean that somebody cannot just get it, then I have not seen that evidence. So, So Denise says, yes, microclotting study, please, for long haulers tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I Let me write it down. I'm going to forget. So one second. Uh, microclotting. What's wrong with this? Done, note taken, we'll discuss. And with this, how about we break for today? We did a lot of non tech discussions today and we can continue tomorrow skyfrog says uh, skyfrog has a question has there been any genetic studies done as far as those asymptomatic no there have been some genetic studies in general for cytokine storm not so there have been so many genes identified that i don't think there is a specific gene or set of genes known but asymptomatic i don't think so that's a good question cool so um let's stop for now and we'll meet each other tomorrow so please like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee or be a patron or uh, support with PayPal. Thank you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.